everybody, my name is Alex. Welcome to... That's backwards. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and today I'm going to be giving you my June TBR. Now in the month of May, I did not get to participate in any readathons just because there weren't any that I was particularly interested in, but in the month of June we have three. So the way I'm going to give you this TBR is kind of in the order of how I'm going to be reading them. The first couple weeks of the month, there are no readathons, so I'm going to be reading a lot of library picks that I have out, and then I'll let you know the TBR for each individual readathon from there. The other part of this is that all three of these readathons actually overlap a little bit. So I am going to be doubling up on some challenges to put into individual readathons so that they work for both, so I can kind of read them in the transition so that they count for both. Is that cheating? Maybe. I'm gonna do it anyway. So being a little bit ambitious, I was going to try to back it off a little bit, but here we are. Who knows if I'll finish them all, but let's keep your hopes high, people. So in the beginning of the month, I'm gonna try to tackle some of the library books that I currently have out. The first book I have is Aurora Rising by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. And can we just take a minute and praise my library? Because this is a brand new release. It just came out in May and they already have it. I totally didn't expect it. Saw it on the shelf, had to snatch it. I could not leave without this one. This author duo wrote The Illuminate Files, which is a, another sci-fi trilogy that I absolutely adored, devoured, loved. I have such high expectations for this. This book follows our main character, Tyler Jones, in the year 2038, and he is part of the Aurora Academy, and he is being tasked with starting his own squad, but he kind of amasses this ragtag team of individuals to go on this mission. I don't know a ton about this, but I do know I love the authors and it sounds like Six of Crows in space. So who am I to say no? The next book that I have is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. This book follows our main character, Lee, whose mother dies by suicide. While Lee's mother was dying, Lee was actually coming home from having her first kiss. So once Lee's mother passes away, Lee believes that her mother has changed into a bird and Lee goes on this journey to meet her maternal grandparents in Taiwan and try to find her mother and try to learn a little bit more about where she came from. I've heard nothing but fantastic things about this one. For a contemporary slash magical realism type story, this is a chunker. It's almost 500 pages, but I am very interested to see where this goes. Like I said, I've heard nothing but wonderful things about this one and it has been on my radar for a really long time and I'm really looking forward to diving in. Hey guys, future Alex here. I just wanted to pop in because I did pre-film my TBR a little bit and since then I have gone to the library and picked up a couple things that I'm going to be reading in the very beginning of June so I thought that I would go ahead and share them with you. The first book that I picked up is In an Absent Dream by Shana McGuire. This is the fourth book in her Wayward Children series of novellas. If you don't know as a whole what this series is about, it follows children who go into portal worlds kind of like Narnia and then they come back into the real world and don't know how to cope. So their parents send them to Miss, I was about to say Miss Peregrine. Miss Peregrine's peculiar children. This one's way for children. And Eleanor West, who runs the school, the parents think that she is kind of reforming them, but she is actually believing their stories. They are all meeting and hoping to find their doors again one day. So each of these novellas follows a different character in the story or sometimes follows them all at the same school. And this one follows the specific character of Lundy. And her world is a world full of logic. I've really enjoyed this series thus far. Like I said, these are just little bitty novellas, less than 200 pages a piece, super easy to read. I have read the other ones on audiobook, but this one I'm gonna be picking up in print. So I'm excited to get through it. Next, I picked up Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins. This one has been released under the title Royals and they re-released it new cover, which I adore. And I think this is precious. I'm excited to get into this one. I wasn't actually planning to pick this one up, but I wanted something cutesy, summery, romancy because I've been reading a lot of heavier books, mainly fantasy, and I wanted something to break that up. So this follows our main character, Millie, who is from Houston, Texas, and ends up going to a boarding school in Scotland, and her roommate is the Princess of Scotland. So I'm sure shenanigans ensue. I'm sure there's a little bit of a love interest, and just overall, I've just heard this is really cutesy, and I'm excited to jump into it. It's pretty short. This is less than 300 pages long, so this one will be 
a quick read that I can just fly through in between some of my bigger novels, so I'm excited for this one. And finally, I checked out The Wicked King by Holly Black. This is the second book to the Folk of the Air trilogy. If you watched my May wrap up, then you'll know that I read The Cruel Prince in May, really loved it, gave it four and a half out of five stars. Wasn't really planning to pick the sequel up this soon, but I saw it at the library, figured I might as well. And this one is just barely 300 pages, so I think that this one will be pretty quick for me to fly through as well. Again, I just saw it and I really kind of couldn't live without it. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled TBR. So now I get into our readathons. Like I said, I have three that I'm going to be participating in in June, and I will leave the announcement videos to all of these down below so you can get any information that I don't include in this video. So first, I'm going to be participating in the Buzzwordathon, and this one is hosted by Books and Lala, and this readathon is going to be running from June 12th to 18th. The point of the Buzzwordathon is that each round there is a certain buzzword that you try to find books with that certain word in the title and you read those during the readathon. So for this round the buzzword is you. So any book that has the word you, your, yours, yourself, anything like that, any variation of the word you, you can read and it will count for this readathon. So I have two in mind that I want to try to tackle. The first one I want to read is You'll Miss Me When I'm Gone by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This book follows two twin sisters who I believe it's their mother was diagnosed with ALS, which is a genetic disease that currently has no cure. So the two twins decide to take a test to see if they hold the gene and if they will develop the disease later in their lifetime. And they find out that one twin will develop the disease and the other twin will not and the story kind of unfolds from there. I have not heard a whole lot about this. I've heard bookables talk about it and that's about it, but this one has intrigued me from the minute I heard about its release. I meant to read it last year, didn't get to. I am definitely gonna be picking it up this month because I am just so intrigued by this plot. And the second book I wanna to try to read for the Buzzwordathon is History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. This book follows our main character, Griffin, and at the beginning of the novel, Griffin's ex-boyfriend, Theo, passes away. So in the midst of his grief, Griffin actually connects with Theo's boyfriend, Jackson, and they form a bond over their combined loss. This book sounds like it's gonna be extremely hard hitting. I've heard nothing but great things. I already know that I like Adam Silvera. I've read They Both Die at the End by him and adored that one. I've been meaning to get to this one for quite a while, so I'm excited to finally see it through. Now, History Is All You Left Me also takes us into the next readathon of the month, which is the Romance-a-thon. The Romance-a-thon will be held from June 17th till the 23rd, and I know one of the hosts of this readathon is Gabby from Gabby Reads. I'll leave her announcement video down below. As you can probably tell from the name of the readathon, the point here is to read all romance books, which History Is All You Left Me is a romance that will lead in, is it a, is it a romance? I hope so. I'm sitting here filming this video and I'm not 100% sure if this is actually a romance, but I'm going to be reading it for the Romance-a-thon anyway. Maybe you'll see me put up a different Romance-a-thon TBR, I don't know. But regardless, I'm going to use History Is All You Left Me for the LGBT category for the Romance-a-thon. For the other categories in the Romance-a-thon, I am going to be doubling up on some books, but those are the next few that I'm going to be talking about. So for the challenge of a forbidden romance, I'm going to be reading Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. This is about, I believe, a stepbrother and stepsister that fall for each other. This one has intrigued me for a while, and the only person I've ever heard talk about it is Gabby, who's hosting this readathon. So I'm excited to try to find it and see what I think about it. My next book will be hitting two different challenges for a new adult romance and a man on the cover, and that is Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. Honestly, I have no idea what this is about. I couldn't tell you. All I know is that I love Colleen Hoover and I want to read everything that she's ever written. So this is one of the next ones that I have to read. So there we go. I'm going to go a little out of order on the challenges because one of the books I want to talk about feeds into the next readathon. But the last challenge of the romance -a is just to pick a seventh book to read. So even though I won't be fulfilling seven books, I just picked a random romance to put into this slot. For this one, I'm going to be reading Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. This book follows our main character, I believe her name is Rachel, and her boyfriend Nick. And Rachel has never met Nick's parents, so he invites her to come to Asia with him. I believe he's from Singapore, and she comes with him to meet his family, come to find out that he's crazy stinking rich, and she had no idea of this, and she's being bombarded into this culture that she has never known, meeting this family that she's never met, and this rich lifestyle that she's never known. It just sounds like a wild ride. I've heard nothing but good things. I want to read the whole trilogy. I want to watch the movie. So just everything is in line for me to be able to read this book. And my last book for the romance -a is also going to cover two different challenges for Pink on the cover and a 2019 release, and that is Famous in a Small Town by Emma Mills. I have never read anything by Emma Mills before, but 
but I've heard nothing but great things about her. I've heard that she just writes these cute, fun, summery contemporaries that I think sound like they're gonna be right up my alley. This one, from what I can gather, doesn't center on the romance, but there is a little bit of romance involved. This is about a girl named Sophie who is in her high school's marching band and they are invited to perform in the Rose Parade. Sophie has put in charge of the fundraising efforts to get her band to the parade and her idea is to get this elusive country singer to kind of come out of hiding and play for them, have a fundraising concert for them, and in the midst of that, you know, she falls in love, yada yada. This one I think is going to be extra special to me. I used to be in Marching Man and I used to teach Marching Man, so I'm very excited to see that play out in a book. It's something that you don't really see that often, so I'm just really excited. I think I'm really going to connect with it. I'm excited for the romance, I'm excited for the premise, I'm excited for everything. Now, Fitness in a Small Town also brings us into the last readathon of the month, and that is the Summerathon. Summerathon takes place from June 21st to 27th, and one of the hosts of the readathon is Bookables. I will leave her announcement video down below for you guys as well. So Famous in a Small Town is going to be covering the challenge for read a book with sunrise colors on the cover, because this is, it's got pink and some orange and some yellow kind of ombre on it, so. Those are sunrise colors, in my opinion. One of the other challenges in this readathon is to drink your favorite summary drink while reading. I mainly just drink water, so any of these books, I'll be drinking water while I read them, so that fits that challenge. But for another actual book, one challenge is a book with food on the cover. So I will be reading Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. Again, I don't know a whole lot about this one either. I know that it follows our main character who goes to Italy. I believe that it was her mother's dying wish for her to know her father, who now lives in Italy, so she goes and meets him, follows in love with a boy probably. I just think it's gonna be cutesy, fun, summery. I love travel books and it has gelato on the cover so it ticks all those boxes. And the last two books in my TBR are written by the same author. So the first one is going to fulfill the challenge of read a book that has something to do with traveling and that is Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. This book follows our main character, Amy. I believe her dad passes away and then her mom decides to move them to the other side of the country and Amy is responsible for driving the family car. So Amy is scared to drive all the way across the country by herself because her father passed away in a car accident. So they enlist the help of the, I believe he's a neighbor or just family friend named Roger to do the road trip with her. Shenanigans ensue, they probably fall in love. I think it's gonna be adorable. I love Morgan Matson. She is precious and I love her books and I'm just excited for all of these, but this one in particular. And lastly is going to fit two challenges for doing a beachy read and a book set in summer and that is Second Chance Summer also by Morgan Matson. This book, again, I have a loose idea of what it's about. It follows our main character. I believe one of her parents, I think her mother, is dying of cancer. And every year during the summer, they go to this beach or this island to spend time together. And this is probably going to be the last time that they're all together as a family like this. So this one's gonna be a little bit more hard hitting. But again, I'm excited to see that. What I've read so far of Morgan Matson is mostly light, cutesy, romantic, nothing too serious, and this one seems like it's going to have a little bit more of a serious element in it, so I'm really excited to see how she plays with that. And that is it for my June TBR. Am I going to finish all these? Probably not, but let's keep our hopes up. Let's cross our fingers. Maybe some miracle will happen and we'll get it all done. So if you've read any of these or if you want to share your June TBR with me, leave all that in the comments down below. I would love to chat with you guys about everything and anything about summary reads. So until next time, bye.